Hi everybody, Dominic Esposito, the drill instructor. Welcome to the clinic. It is Tuesday night. We're in the month of March and things are going great. So glad to see you tonight. Thanks to our sponsor, Pool and Billiard Magazine, Diamond Billiard Products, Dr. Harrison from my amazing glasses, the Rio Rat from Mr. Matt Kaplan, a true amazing entrepreneur and yours truly with you tonight. So um, decided this afternoon to go back and look at some of the mail that I might have been missing and just deciding what we're going to cover tonight. And wouldn't you know it, I was picking up on some questions regarding people who are having trouble with shooting on the rail, rail shots. How do I get good at rail shots? I miss my rail shots. Can you give me some, so I'm going to talk to you tonight about just how to master rail shots. So pay close attention. We're going to get into this a little bit quick. What I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to actually teach you how to develop the skill of shooting rail shots so you can master these rail shots and and uh, just kind of follow along okay because this may be something you really hadn't thought of you advanced players especially when you're helping these younger skilled lesser skilled players if I could say it that way uh, this is going to really help give you some direction now one of the things that happens that causes confusion or the fear of shooting rail shots is the cushion this is the cushion, okay? This is the rail, this is the cushion, and when I take a ball and I put it right up here on the cushion and I bring a cue ball out here and, okay, so I've got to shoot that 15 ball and all of a sudden I start to panic because, no, oh, the rail is in the way. Well, I want to show you something and this is really going to help tonight to help you develop the skill and then we're going to go ahead and turn it into a basic drill. Look at the angle of this, okay? This is basically about a 30 degree cut shot. So I'm going to show you something that's kind of amazing. You might have never really considered this, but watch this. Same shot, same shot, same shot, same shot, same shot, right there. There's the same 30 degree cut shot. Now you might look at that and go, oh, Dom, that's no really big problem. No, 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 I'm not afraid of shots like that. It's the shots that are on the rail that are really hard. Well, my question to you would be, if you feel relatively comfortable shooting this shot, why can't we just go ahead and move it like this? Let's move it. Put the same angle on the rail. Cue ball's in the same spot. Oh, it's the same cut shot. Whether the cushion were there or not, the same way we made the first shot, you make the second shot, it's the same cut shot. Stop worrying about the cushion. You still have to hit the ball in the proper contact spot to pocket it in the angle to the pocket you're shooting at. Right, so that's it. That's number one, and we're over the fear of, oh wait, just pretend the cushion's not even there. It's the same shot that you'd shoot right from here if this were the same angle. Okay, so here's one of the things I'm going to do to give you a hand. First of all, let's go ahead and get right here within one diamond, and let's take the cue ball and put it within one diamond. <laughs> now, excuse me. You would have no fear to make the shot. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to shoot a rack of this shot. So one, two, three, four, five, the whole rack, 15 balls. <coughs> we empty the corner pocket. Let's go ahead and move the ball just a little bit closer to the rail. Same shot. Shoot a rack of them. In fact, I would even encourage you to shoot one from each side. Shoot one from this side. Shoot one from that side. Shoot a rack of these. Shoot a rack of those. Then eventually go ahead and take the exact same shot and put it on the rail just like that. Same exact shot. You say, well, that, that's, that's not my problem. The problem is uh, when the balls are that close, <laughs> that's no big deal. This is where we start. Step one, learn to crawl before we walk. We learn to walk before we run. We learn to run before we even join the race. So we'll go ahead and take the same shot right from here. Make that ball inside the pocket. We'll go ahead and we'll take this shot from here. Same thing. Make that ball. But you've already been shooting these shots from being out here like this. Okay? Put a little angle on them like that. 
until eventually you began to walk them closer and closer to the rail and you were building up not only your skill level but your confidence level. Then I want you to go ahead and take this and add a half a diamond to the shot. And go ahead and take the cue ball and pull it away a full diamond from the shot. Go ahead and work on a rack of these. Now if you start to feel like you keep missing too many of them, take it off the rail and go ahead and just get back to making some of those cut shots. And then eventually slide it back to the rail. Now, the next thing that's going to happen is we're going to take it back to two full diamonds. And then we'll take it back to two and a half diamonds. And then we'll take it back to three diamonds. Right here. And then eventually go ahead and, 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 and let's go ahead and add a little bit of distance. But if you will start small and short and easy simple and then create distance you give yourself the confidence to what you're doing now that's the first thing i want to help you understand how to get over the fear of being in the rip now the next thing i want you to do is once you start to go back to this building confidence level the next thing i want you to focus on here and i'll bring out a couple more cue balls for this now i want you to get into the habit now next of taking the same shot. This time we're going to learn how to add some inside left English. And we're going to learn how to make those. The next thing we're going to do is, again, shoot a rack of those. Shoot a rack of those. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to learn how to use a little bit of bottom withdraw. And then we'll actually even use to learn a little bit of outside where we're actually turning the ball in. Now, once you have become confident with this, add that half a diamond all over again. Add the two diamonds. Go to two and a half diamonds. Go to three diamonds. And go ahead and bring that cue ball back. Continue to work on shooting with inside English, bottom English. Even go ahead and use some top, top inside. And then even some outside. Now, outside is a little bit more difficult, but don't start that right away because it's too easy when you're spinning with the outside to throw the ball out of the cushion instead of down the cushion. Now, the next thing I want to show you, which is a really cool little way, if you're just warming up, you're, you're, you're getting ready um, to do some of your warm-up drills, here's a little bit of something you could do that's kind of fun. Just put a ball on each side, take the cue ball, put it in the middle of the table, and then from here, go ahead and, and actually work on hitting the first shot right here. And again, don't be afraid. If you miss, no big deal. Go ahead and just try to bring that cue ball pretty much right back to the center of the table. Come over to the other side. Now, remember a couple of weeks ago I started talking about ways to lean into the table properly. And here I can actually make the reach on this one. So I'm... I'm about two inches away from needing that cue extension. But right here, I can go ahead and do the exact same thing. That's what's going to work. Okay, once you've done that, and I would suggest that you can go ahead and actually work with a few shots, then go ahead and bring the same exact thing up to the second diamond. Do the same, and then ultimately bring it up to the third diamond. So you want to shoot left side cut shots, right side cut shots, you want to be able to shoot them with bottom, with draw. You want to shoot them with top. You want to shoot them with inside, with outside. And then move them up a diamond, and move them up a diamond. So eventually you're going to hit about seven or eight from this side, another seven or eight from this side. Move it back, move it back. You got three full racks. At any point when you see you're really beginning to struggle on any one of these, and that is why the drills are so valuable because the drill indicates to you where your skill weakness is needing real attention to build that skill again or just to even start building it for the first time. So work these. The other thing too is go ahead and actually work this same drill from the opposite side. One of the things I might recommend you do in order to give you a little bit more skill working the longer length of the table 
is go ahead and set something up that gives you the opportunity to go back and forth a little bit. Like here, let's, uh, let's start from down here on the first diamond. We'll put this one up on the first diamond here. And then go ahead and then once again, practice on the bottom, center, top, and actually learn the cue ball track of where you're going. So let's just take about a half a tip of bottom right here on this. There's a half a tip of bottom. Give me about a five speed shot stroke. We'll take that. And there it is. Watch that cue ball all the way to the other side. Very good. Then go ahead and put another one right back up there. Now that was the right side off the rail. Now this time let's go ahead and drive it a little bit off the top rail and bring it back into this section. Remember this position I showed you the other day with my leg coming up on the table. Comfortable. I'm at center ball. Now I'm going to go up one tip and I'm going to go inside one tip and then take the shot and there we go and we bring the ball up oh, caught the point hey these are the really good things that we actually will learn about the better way of which cue ball path to be driving to and then from that position there just go ahead and put another ball up on this stop <clears throat> and continue to work yourself back and forth back and forth and at that point you're going to give yourself the opportunity to learn confidence from off the side rails, a little more confidence from off these top rails, and that's what we really need to be doing. Boy, talk about getting close to my work. Woo! That's a close one. I can get away with that one. But in the meantime, for everybody else that's here, I want to thank you so much. Go in the hole, baby. Oh, we missed. Not bad, but that's why we really want to work on the rail shots. I work on regularly, and so should you. So again, remember, start short, bring some length. If you're not satisfied with the, the, the result, reshoot it, reshoot it until you're really happy with what you see the cue ball path doing after you pocket the ball. And then, of course, where, at, at what point and what distance might you be having any difficulty um, being able to see it. And remember, if you start having any trouble on the cushion, Take the shot off the rail five or six inches and just reshoot as a standard cut shot. That's really all we need to be doing, okay? So listen, everybody. Um, this is a part of the, the process of building the skill, but it doesn't take long at all. Within a month, you're going to be completely uh, confident with what you'll be doing with shooting off, off the rails. And, of course, there is a more advanced level that we will get to at some point about shooting rail shots and... Um, but right now, we really wanted to get to the basics and mastering, mastering rail shots. Okay, everybody, I love you. God bless you. Remember, aim straight, shoot straight, split the pockets, and do it the drill instructor way. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Have a great rest of the week, everybody. God bless you. Bye-bye.